you know, the world is is much bigger than just Bitcoin. I think a lot of times I mean, people may use it synonymously with cryptocurrency and Bitcoin. That might be the first one they think about, but the world's much larger. Um, what are you seeing from an institutional uh, perspective around uh, investment strategies? Uh, it's it's very much a bifurcated world because the typical institutional buyer in the U.S. cannot really access crypto for their clients because of regulatory issues. And we've seen in the last, well, we've seen basically all year that most of the price performance in these tokens is coming during Asian trading hours. So let's go back to like, why are we here in the first place is to make money so that number goes up. And so we're trying to pick these new uh, assets that are going to go up the most. Uh, and why are they going to go up? Uh, it's, it goes back to the conversation in the last panel. Um, the, the TLT long bond ETF is now down more peak to trough uh, than Bitcoin, right? Global ag bond index has a negative return over five years. So there may be this dollar milkshake theory that's happening in the developed world among the U.S. and its allies. But there's an increasing part of the world that you know, object to what we are printing our dollars to spend. Um, and that is the part of the world that's adopting this technology. And that's frankly where, you know, you can see a lot of the flows coming from, you know, family offices outside of the U.S. And the, the, the point of the technology is to hold your own keys so that you don't have to rely on all of these intermediaries to hold value for you. Uh, and you know, we as investors are trying to get ahead of that curve and say, okay, this is the way the world's gonna be in 20 years or in how many ever years. And since we're all on a different path demographically and some of us are, ch are saving for our kids, then it would make sense, okay, well, let's buy some of these tokens and have a regulated custodian hold them on behalf of us. And, and that's kind of what we're doing at, at Van Eck. But um, the point is really to identify, like, which are these decentralized networks that are going to gain adoption globally as an alternative to the U.S. dollar, frankly. Uh, and our job as investment analysts is to try to handicap which of those networks have the best chance of intermediating the most amount of value and capturing some stream of income that goes back to the token holder itself. And then uh, personally, I'm managing a fund of, of you know, 15 or so of these call options that I think have the best chance of capturing uh, the lion's share of the value. So the, the clients that we have are, are typically more on the family office and endowment side, but as the Bitcoin ETF, uh, hopefully, uh, as a, some number of them launch uh, by Q1 of next year, some of the polling that we're seeing indicates some considerable investor appetite. And if you look at the European and Canadian Bitcoin ETNs, they've had about $600 million worth of inflows in the last month. The, the entire year to date number is like 800 million. So that's three quarters of all flows coming in the last few weeks from investors looking to front run what we hope is, you know, this new uh, new buyer, which is RIA's wirehouses, who will finally be able to at least buy Bitcoin, which should be custodied by one of the, you know, major service providers. In, in some of your previous life, you mentioned kind of covering the Web 2.0 companies. In terms of research, traditional finance versus maybe some of the research that you're doing in digital assets, you know, what are some of the similarities? What's different? Kind of, what does it look there? Crypto is a is a very participatory asset, so the governance is happening uh, on Twitter and in Reddit forums. Um, there's no broker delivering you your morning call with your upgrades and downgrades and choice of corporate access. So it's very much a, like, even as an asset manager, you have to bootstrap your own network, which is why we, st like, when, when Jan got conviction on Bitcoin in 2017 and the regulator didn't let him set up an ETF, he started, well, he bought Bitcoin, but he started writing checks into venture so that we would have relationships and a network. These are all essentially early stage ventures. Or what it, if they happen to be liquid tokens or illiquid ventures. So that formed our network. And then we launched these uh, private funds once we got a little smarter uh, in the space. But it's, it's very different. Uh, there's a lot more imagination and uh, kind of do your own research involved.